Welcome to episode 95 of The Endless Stream. I'm Aiden, and as usual, I'm joined by Brian and Kevin. We are three artists, illustrators, filmmakers, and all-round shit-talkers, and each week we take some of The Endless Stream of content brought to you through Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Amazon, Spotify. Wherever you get your content, we take a chunk of it, we watch it, and we talk about it. This week, we're going to talk about the 2022 horror film Barbarian. We're also talking about the HBO series The Last of Us. We talk about the Netflix documentary volcano rescue it's about a volcano on the island of wakari i think it is i say the word province too many times well not i really mean this country just keep your ears out for that and yeah a wide range of nonsense is covered brian joins the call at one point running a little late and uh has not started his recording so you'll hear us talking to empty air for a bit we've been doing this for a while but try as we might we're uh, still chaotic if you like what you hear please consider subscribing to the podcast Head over to iTunes, head over to Spotify, rate, review, like, subscribe. All those good things really help us out. You can also go to Instagram at The Endless Cast, where we put up art and clips to go with each and every episode. That's a great place to send us direct messages. That's a great place to tell us you agree, you disagree, or suggest something for us to watch. You can also do that to our email address, theendlesscast at gmail.com. All of that being said, let's get into the episode. Hey, Kevin. It's hey. Sunday, the 22nd of January, 2023. Uh-huh. How are you feeling this morning? F- exhausted. I'm running on little, little, very little sick. But that's just I life. Also, I'm exhausted. Go on. Uh, I, well, I didn't really do anything. I, actually, you know what? I, st- I, I watched uh, just a bunch of stuff on YouTube, and I drew a lot. I actually drew a lot. Uh, I kind of got into a... Just a dry mood very late last night, and I kind of emerged out, so it kept me up. So I, I got quite enjoyed it. What time were you drawing till? It's about three, half three. Jesus, Jesus! Yeah, I can't. I get, I get, I get sleepy around eleven. I go to bed. Yeah, normally I do, but uh, uh, yeah, I kind of. I know it was it was a Saturday night by myself. I'd make a most of it. A texture. Oh. Just, just one of my pictures I did last night. Is that like Muay Thai thing? It's just a thing in, like, yeah, wrestling gear. The thing from Fantastic Four. Oh. Ah. For those I've seen. I was going to do him in blue, but then I was just like, eh, I'm going to just do whatever colours I want. Does he have a little beard? Uh, no, that's just his face. Oh. You know, it's just it's it's just style. It looks like he's got a little beard. Yeah, it could do. Sure, you know. It's, 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 it's the limit is my imagination, pal. Oh, you want imagination. <laughs> Did you get up to any nonsense this week? Did you buy any comic books? You did, did. You posted some comic books. What did you I, buy? I bought, um, well, Emer gave me vouchers for Christmas. So uh, I got all of Elsa, and I can't pronounce her second name, Elsa Chartier. Or, she has a series of books called November, and I got a series of those books. Uh, Emer got me vouchers, so I was able to pick up the, the entire series of her books. They're kind of like crime stuff, you know. And then... Uh, one of the other places she got me a voucher for have a lot of like uh, old comic packs so you can just go through whatever and I picked up uh, a multiple man run from Marvel that was very I think it was very uh, a big hit at the time and also a, a small Luke Cage run by and the art is by and I can't think Scott Wells or something and it's very very good stuff it's a it's a cool it's a cool looking uh, Luke Cage book and um, it's a lot of fun um, and I actually read uh, an Irish comic book this week, uh, Robert Curley's, and I think it's Barry Keegan's uh, League of Volunteers. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm sure you're that's, aware that's of it. on the shelves in Sub City for, yes. for yeah. a while. I, for a I've while. never picked it up. It's good. Um, yeah, man. Sure, look, it's a lot of fun. It's it's just, uh, you're, you know you learn about Ir- or, you know basically it's Irish history and like kind of what if Ireland had their own like legal gentleman kind of meets Hellboy you know fighting Nazis all that kind of stuff. It's fun. So I just dug up the picture of the the books you bought because you did send them through to our group. It's Gendy Tartakovsky as well on that on that Cage book. Um, yeah. Is Scott Wills doing the interior art or? coloring or because like it looks like Gendy's is it, Samurai uh, Jack style yes that's is that the so guy is it, who is did Gendy Primal? drawn that's the guy who huh? did Primal that's the guy who did Primal yeah, and stuff yeah. yes that's and I think you see, Clone Wars and yes yeah yeah it's yeah it's he he drew it and stuff that was the thing uh, I thought it was Scott well, I, I'm, not, I'm used with names so you have to forgive me for that but it's just like okay. uh, I knew it was a Primal guy and uh, yeah it's a good book it's a cool little book 
Yeah, no, like I, I would, I mean, dig it out, people. It's it's that guy's art style is uh, fantastic. I mean, he's behind uh, Hotel Transylvania as well, and mm-hmm. I think he did a. There's a teaser for a Popeye okay. feature that they did there as well, um, which is like it's like a proof of concept test and the movie never went ahead, but I think he was behind that as well. Um, Uh, Yeah. So it's a kind of, it's a, it's a book I've been meaning to pick up. Uh, I'd seen it in there a few times along with the multiple man one. Uh, So yeah, that's what I did. Had a wee, had a wee look, a wee, a wee gander through the different things. Pretty happy with what I got. Got to use my voucher. Cool. Yeah. Uh, What, what did you do? How was your week? Um, my week was, um, pretty good, um, work, gym, drawing, watching content, content, like an asshole. Um, uh, the big thing for me was I was aiming at the Bag of Cats show on Friday, Mm -hmm. which, uh, was cool. Um, it's always fun and games trying to get those shows set up there once a month but they're they're always like a little bit of chaos you know you put put six to eight acts in a lineup and you're selling tickets and you're trying to make sure the venue's good and somebody has to cancel and you're trying to find a replacement and then you're trying to get in on time and like we suddenly worried that like we remember like we would all remembered chaplains but we were all like how many seats are actually in the mm. place like I know we could get a lot of people standing in there but how many seats are there and suddenly we were like well we've sold 40 tickets and there's going to be about 10 acts so we're going to have 50 people in the room and then we suddenly got really paranoid that there just would not be enough seats and in trying to work that out then we completely sold out so we've got 50 paid That's- ticket bought uh entitled to a seat customers and then you've got people actually just turning up on the door and so it's like okay this is fucking amazing but we're we're jam-packed um and then i'm a big ball of stress in of general course. like i'm i'm the worriest of worry warts and so i'm always aiming to be in places early and be making sure everything's set up and carried around the place and lifted and i get very particular so um I think I was just radiating stress for a good chunk before the show. Once the show kicked off, it was loads and loads and loads of fun. Like, it was um, great crack. Uh, That's excellent. We had... Uh, so somebody had to cancel, and then we did a little ring around, and we had Mike Rice drop in um, and fill a spot instead, and he was amazing. And Sinead Walsh jumped in for us, and they were amazing and uh, we had Mila Gula who were a sketch act and they were amazing and Erin McGathy did stand up and she was amazing and she called me mean for making her doing stand up uh, it's more improv and sketch I guess though I mean look that was that was that was the bit and it was hilarious um, and who else did we have we had the Bag of Cats ourselves we had Seamus Stackpole we had Jack Dolan um, suddenly worried I'm forgetting somebody um, Jack, Mike, oh, and Sean Ayosa jumped in as well. Sean Ayosa is great. Um, so, 50 people, little raffle in the middle, little dancey numbers. Um, we, d- we did a little change up to our intro thing where we kind of like came up to the the little theme tune we've got and we brought all the cats out and we danced for like 10 seconds like lunatics and had the crowd cheer and started the show once we kicked everyone else off stage. And it was fun. But what was funny was or what was amusing to me was the one time we decided to do that, there's actually signs all around the interior of that venue that say no dancing at any time. Oh my God. I don't know what licensing regulation they have or yeah. whether it's the owner. They were they were lovely and very accommodating, so I don't want to put anything on the owners, but like sometimes you get, you've licensed to sell drink, but you don't necessarily have license to be like a dance bar, you know? Um, but it was funny. Mm. I just, it was like, it's just it's an it's an odd thing to kind of say like uh, point out. You know what I mean? Yeah, we were in the town of Footloose. Yes. Yeah, mental. Which was great fun. And then it's just you know recovery the next day, and I don't know. Like there were, saw so somebody post there were seven different shows, seven different comedy nights happening around Dublin last night. All of them sold out. Brilliant. Uh, which is fantastic. So comedy is buzzing. 
um, and I've got uh, we're going to do a set of giggles on Tuesday and a set at uh, N2O Comedy Black Sheep Bits and Pints so I've got two sets on Tuesday night so I have to uh, write some funny things Oof that's uh, that's tough maybe if you listen back to some old uh, podcast episodes you might get some inspiration from myself and Brian <laughs> Okay <laughs> I'm enjoying the comedy end of things. And, like, I, I really do like the hosting. Like, somebody was pretty... Uh, somebody was very... I don't know why I'm being vague. A um, couple of the comics. Let's be vague. A couple of the comics. Loads of people um, were really complimentary to the, the hosting end of things. Because, again, we do we do one show a month and people don't see a lot of me doing stuff anyway. But, like as I'm getting more kind of relaxed into it and, and as Sharon's getting more relaxed into it as well, like um, we're just having a bit more banter with the, the audience and, um, you know, fun and games and um, being a little more relaxed, chatting to people. And you get good answers out of people sometimes as well. Like actually doing crowd work is funny. Like um, there was a Greek lady, you know, where's anybody from? And this one was a Greek. And it's like, oh, how long have you been in Ireland? It's seven years. And Sharon's as... Why? What? What brought you to Ireland? And me being a smartass, I said, "Was it massive economic collapse?" And she just nodded. That's that's incredibly insensitive. Yeah, it was hilarious. Um, <laughs> um, and and oh, then yes. I gave them shit for Grexit, which is of course the uh, oh, the uh, never, never incitement point for Brexit, because when they had their massive downturn in two thousand and eight, and their country almost defaulted, the first solution they put on the table was leave the EU, go back to their. Uh, is it drachma? I can't remember what the the f- currency was in Greece, um, but they're the ones that floated the idea of leaving the European Union, and they ultimately decided against it. But once the concept was out there, then Britain started talking about it. The seed was planted. Interesting basically, yeah. turn of events. So everybody remembers Brexit, but people forget that it started as Grexit. Grexit. Um. Yeah, you, could, you could, there's a bit there, pal. You can polish it off. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> like it's a bit. It. I'm just saying I'm that it's it, it does amuse me that people kind of like I had forgotten about it to be to be fair. Like that was early 2010s, and it was 2016 when the it's been so long since Brexit actually happened. They had that vote in 2016. I know, yeah, but sure, it took didn't it? It just took forever to. Theresa May was taking a long time to finalise the, the uh, what would you say, protocol or whatever you want to say. You know? Well, I mean, Theresa May came in after, after, was it Cameron? Yeah, it was in, or it was in, uh, introduction. So I hear, I'm not like, uh, no, it was, it's, it was Cameron, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, like he, he you know, ducked out and like, we it say it David took her long It was Dave Cameron and the other bloke. Farage. No, not Farage. There's another chap. Rhys Mogg, Boris Johnson. I can't remember. Uh, Michael Gove. There was. Big bag of cunts. Uh, there was. I thought there was another. Or maybe that was before. Prime Minister. Anywho, let's get back on. Let's get back on uh, actual discursible things. Got any news this week? Any? Have we got any. Uh, Movie um, news is. Movie Netflix movies. put up a big trailer or teaser trailer of everything that's like coming up on the Netflix end of things. I don't know if you mm-hmm. watched any of that. I didn't. Um, I didn't even hear about it. There's some fun looking stuff in there, but then there's also some like um there's just this thing where it's like production companies have clearly met the required visual standards of Netflix. Like if you go to Netflix, you can see a list of like if you want to be on Netflix, these are the required visual standards. Um everything's shiny, everything's crisp um it all looks big and professional but it doesn't look interesting or artistic and i was looking at it thinking god there's there's no i don't know i don't know cinematography to some of these things um so the, there's a lot of movies in there that just look like you know if it was a different age they'd just be straight to dvd things yes of course um, oh i did see sorry i did see some stuff coming up because extraction 2 was coming out Yes. Well, maybe I just maybe I just did you say did you share a video? Uh, maybe I saw it. I think Scruff did because there's a Zack Snyder teaser bit in there as well for a thing called Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon is that Star Wars? No, or is it mm-hmm. like a? It's like a kind of his own. Oh, is it? Oh no, I think it, I think it was a Star Wars script. 
Um, but they've just done their own thing, gone off on one. Now that you say it, I, I remember it like that, which is cool. Like I, I had a, a, I've talked to you before. I have an idea for a thing and it's like, well, that's clearly what I think Star Wars should be. You know, like it's what my kid brain wanted the Star Wars prequels to be. Mm -hmm. And even though they didn't do that, um, I still noodle around with this notion that like, this is a cool sci-fi story separate of the Star Wars universe. But it's, you know, it's in my head what the the Knights of the Jedi Republic were. Yeah, I know. And yeah. the, what the Clone Wars were. I've got a much more like, like, I don't know what George Lucas talked himself into this being as time went on. Yeah. But I think there was a simpler, yeah, or I people agree. interpreted it as a simpler kind of medieval knights kind of vibe. Yeah, order, you know? I think, yeah. Yeah, and I, I just like had that like, you know, you're not necessarily all reporting back to an order on a capital planet. You're just out in the world. I know you're. You're, saying, a, like, you're, you're, you're a Jedi Knight, you know, and you yeah, don't right. have to all wear a uniform. I never got the sense from the fucking original films that Jedi Knights had to be wearing this bloody Tunic. Franciscan robes yeah. thing, you know. Um, yeah, well, anywho. I think I would. I always kind of thought, like you know, kind of he always said that he wrote these massive movies all together and stuff, but I was always dubious of it. But apparently, shout out to George Lucas's wife because she was, uh, she was actually kind of like the one who any of the good ideas in Star Wars mostly came for her or edited through her. Yes, yeah. God, Marcia Lucas was not her name. Like people put a lot of credit on the fact that like she took a lot of film coming back in and and was like, okay, let's see how this cuts together. Lose this. Look, if you've ever read the script for the Journal of the Wills, or the Star Wars taken from the Journal of the Wills, um. Oh, it's it's tough going. Um, same thing with like somebody said, is it the maybe it's Blues Brothers or Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. Dan Aykroyd wrote like a four hundred page script. You know what I mean? And somebody had to go. Okay, now let's uh, let, let's re let's remove the aliens. Let's remove the this. Let's remove let's, the psychedelic. Let's trim the fat, as I say. Yeah. But um, but and, and that, that's the like if if I, we've talked about stuff before, you know. But if I say if I was going to draw or write something or whatever. I would certainly say you're gonna could put it through you, and then you could make your edits and things like that. Like, and it's just like it's just getting feedback and being, you know, being open to like how can I make this story better? It doesn't mean that you created any less of it. You're still 100 percent the creator of it. You know what I mean? Like, but which actually brings us to a very uh, easy talking point. Well, a, a very like we can touch on it and 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 um, see where you're at. Like a check in point. Um, mm -hmm. You were ideating a comic book story for the year of 2023. Yes. With a view towards having it, um, say, outlined and maybe thumbnailed by the end of January. Yes. How is she cutting? Uh, I would say poorly. poorly. Uh-oh. Uh, All right, well, I'm, I'm giving you a nudge. I'm going, do you have a concept of the story as a whole? I have a concept, but I don't know if it's good enough to worth pursuing or is it just silly. I nope, you're pursuing it. We've agreed upon this. Is it good enough to pursue, though? I don't know. We we resolved this. This was this was a whiskey promise. Um, yeah. Oh no, the whiskey promise. I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm committing to. It's mm. the idea, the storyline. I'm not entirely com convinced by. So I'm, mm. that's what I'm still. Uh, that's but Should look. If it's a case that like you know, I, I I first the first month is trying to get some sort of concept, and the second month is doing the thumbnails. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Like mm. it's an ever evolving. Well, Gotta give us deadlines. Give us deadlines. Uh, no, no deadlines for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have to produce on the end of the month. But. Um, yeah, do you want to give Do you want to give me an outline? Not on the this, podcast. No, no, no. I don't mean on the podcast, but I mean like, do you want to give me an outline early next week? I can give you some notes. Yeah, for sure. And we can get that back to you so that you can tighten it up for the end of the month. Yep. Now introducing in the allow me to introduce right myself. Quarter in the yellow trunks, waiting at na, 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 na. It's Brian. Weighing in at, do you want to take a guess, actually, Kevin? No, I don't want to guess. Brian's Weighing weight. in at. Um, I don't want to guess. You, I, no, I, you can do. You can do me too. But like, let's 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 do it. Go on. Put yourself Brian out there. Brian could be sixty-five to seventy kilos. Would you say that's close, Brian? No sound. You're on. You're, I think oh, your Skype on, is on muted. mute. He, he, he's muted, but yes. Yeah. Ah. 
Aiden, Very good. Aiden is in the region of 85 to 90, I'd say. Uh, around about an even 100. I was going to say you're taller and you're muscular, so yeah. Mm. yeah. About 220 pounds. It yes. fluctuates a little bit depending on water, but yeah, I'm right there. Uh, and I was not going that much I weigh because I am obviously the tallest and the most muscular. <laughs> going by my logic. <laughs> are you are you are you close to my weight? I'm not saying anything. Um, let's move swiftly on. I'm close. Uh, well, without without saying I'm a close number, to it. I'm close to it. Without saying a number, do you have a scales in your house and yes, have you weighed course, yourself? Of course, of course. So you are aware of it. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I've had to um, uh, for for reasons. Uh, I've had to uh, acknowledge all this information recently. Uh, you know, diabetes. No life insurance. I'm not oh. sure like that. How did I fill out a life insurance form? Maybe it was a different sort of thing and it wasn't houses. Nobody asked me shit all. Yeah. I had to get life insurance that was associated with a pension. And Fair. there was very little investigation of that. Brian, you've missed nothing. Hey. We haven't we haven't really started discussing the the the, we- the, 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 the meat. What did brother what did brother, brother Ada used to always refer to talk about Brian the meat and potatoes of things, didn't he? He used to always reference meat and potatoes. Did I? Let's get down to the meat and... Can, can I say, Brian, that I like the choice of colour of t-shirt? Um, it's a very nice sort of uh, saffron yellow. It's a, it's a mustard yellow. He, This guy gets it. It's more mustard. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into into the, the meat and potatoes. Uh, oh, I do say that. Um, there there oh, you go. <laughs> also, I put vitamin C in my water as well, so it's yellow too. Yeah, he's drinking his urine. Um... Hey, there's there's medicinal purposes, apparently. I would actually listen to the Romans. Don't be listening to the ancient Romans. They're all dead. Uh, do you know what, actually? They're all dead. Speaking of ancient Romans and Pompeii mm. and volcanoes, all right. I watched that volcano documentary on Netflix about the volcano eruption in New Zealand in like 2018, where... I think it was 47 tourists or something had uh, gone onto this island. Uh, it was an active volcano. It erupted in 2013. It Is erupt- one of the survivors of that big on, I say big on, but I see her on TikTok a lot. Is that a, is that, is that a, well, we've been recording for 29 minutes. That's okay. okay. That's I, I, okay. I guess I did. I, okay. Uh, hit record, please, Brian. Um, uh, if that's you haven't. Okay. Now, so I watched this documentary. Uh, of a volcano that erupted in 2018, I think it was. No, sorry, 2019 erupted. Um, it had initially erupted in 2013. Three years later, it erupted in 2016. And three years later, in 2019, it was at level two. Level one being, you know, level two being, you know, and level three being eruption. Uh, and this is at is it? This okay. is high activity right. level two. Uh, live because like DEFCON five is like the lowest DEFCON. Yes, this it? is this is second highest. And counts back down backwards, right? So. This is second highest or second lowest. So it's not like DEFCONs. <laughs> it's two. <laughs> it's a two. But, uh, it's a solid. But two. Uh, three being like solid number two. Three being you know, uh, uh, what do they call it? They call it something like it. They had a great word for it, but basically like eruption event or something like that. You know, and. Um, mm. But uh, Jesus, fucking shit! That documentary is harrowing. It's brutal. brutal. What's the name of the documentary? Uh, I, I, I. It escapes me at the moment, but it's the big volcano one on uh, Netflix. Stop laughing at me. I'm trying. I, I should. I, I appreciate I you bringing funny. the content. <laughs> uh, let me see what's called. Uh, the volcano rescue from, no, that might not be, volcano rescue from, Wakari, but well, I'm I'm probably butchering that, but um, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. Funny. So it's, it's the volcano, volcano yeah, colon rescue. rescue from Wakari. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know that's what you said, but I just, I don't know. I paused where the colon was or something. Yeah. I said it in an affirmed fashion. Yes. Just to reiterate the name of it. Thank you. 
Um, Not at all. But uh, yeah, very, very good. Br- brutal. Horrendous. Yeah. Kind of. I watched a lot of. Like, we watched a lot of TV shows recently, like an awful lot, like, and a few movies that come on the back of Christmas and things, and we're kind of. I think we're kind of just watching a little bit through more documentary stuff now. Uh, we watched. Yeah, I there was another documentary we watched, but. Um, yeah, this was this was definitely one of the ones that uh, watched this week, and it was brutal, like interesting, but like horrendous. Would you go to a volcano if you saw that the pattern was every three years that it's at high activity? No, no. See, I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. go. But would you go shark? This this is like the the tourists that went to Fukushima, like not that long after the disaster there, and they all brought geiger counters with them and like whatever the safe number was it very quickly just changed. jumps to 10 times that and they're all just sitting there going we had no idea like like they said it was safe and i was like you fucking idiot. Well, yeah dude, was something. that the, like was that the dark tourism video dark tourist yeah, yeah. and they're they're all very yeah. quickly going hold on our guy you know. like they, they they all they all broad geiger counters it's not like they provided it to them saying look how safe it is bring your own geiger counter they all went they all got tickets they all bought their own personal geiger counters because they wanted to to see and then when reality hits them when the very likely reality hits you them, want to see you, you can see the panic set in on the bus like they're they're just kind of like they're they're, they're thinking about you know having kids and stuff they're like cooking that. themselves like, like, what, yeah, what does this mean for this? It's like, what? Why? Why? <laughs> yeah. Well, like I mean, well, I w- where where are there where are there active volcanoes or that are kind of touring? I mean, well, Vesuvius is that dormant, dead? Well, so it's people would go to Vesuvius, right? It's not doing anything. Well, I was just gonna say, like, kind of like apparently none of them ever are truly dead, though. Yeah, like, this they, is they true. can all at any point someday Erupt. just kick mm-hmm. off again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, I. Doesn't matter how long they've been lying dormant. I, I was just going to say, like, uh, it's an interesting documentary, and I do really recommend it. Uh, although it's challenging to watch, for sure, a hundred percent. Basically, this the, the, these people aren't because there's different types of volcanoes. This is a different type of volcano than the one that you would have in places like Hawaii. So this is more like kind of like sulfury and all that kind of stuff. So basically, like uh, when it went off and stuff, people would have been more likely to kind of say like burned by like extreme steam so their clothes mm. would have been fine but then their skin and muscle and stuff would have essentially just like melted off as a result of you know the heat obviously but uh it's just just brutal stuff there's an irish guy he's an incredible irish guy and a young guy uh he was a pilot flying people into the volcano and stuff you know uh mm. he his his story is absolutely insane uh, an amazing character you know but um mm. Uh, it is really good stuff. There is a couple on it though who kind of shape off. It's terrible because she was basically just didn't want to go, and it was his day to pick the activity, and he chose the volcano. Uh. And then like she was just like getting really antsy and being like, "Oh, this like you know I don't feel good. It's just gonna erupt." And literally he said like, "It's not going to erupt." And then boom, you know, yeah. terrible. But uh, and like they are, are they still together? they are still together? Uh, get to fuck. Wait, do together. they do they get burnt? Uh, they, yes, they are horrendously burnt. Uh, meat and skin and everything was falling off his hands and her hands and everything like that. Like uh, they they are they were basically melting on the back of the ship or the the, the boat when they were like trying to get to land, and people wouldn't let them into the the inside part of the boat. But there's obviously other victims in there that were in also horrific, horrific ways, but they couldn't do anything. These people they couldn't even wrap up their wounds because it was just like. Melting flesh and stuff okay. Like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my my tolerance for this story is is. But they're hit, they're I've still hit the together. Wall. I, this is horrible. They're still man. together, but they, they this is horrible. They, they still together, but you do kind of get the feeling like kind of you know <laughs> there's like it's like yeah it was his idea and he's like yeah it was my idea and then she's like I even felt like this and I even said to him and it's just like yeah yep, and then yep, like yep, and then like they're yep, like please uh, stop. they're please you, stop. you get the impression that they're I keep going. <laughs> He's not broken, Let the man broken. finish. But uh, but the they're also finish. just like but they're also just like kind of like if we had known we wouldn't have went and stuff and they didn't re- I, like basically you get the feeling that they think that they were lied to about their safety. Um, 
which I I don't necessarily uh, agree with to a degree because the, the, I've been. I just want to say, hang on, hang on. I just let me finish. I just want to say, I've been on holidays. I've you know I've wanted to do stuff like uh, uh, shark cave diving and uh, you know paragliding or whatever it was. I wanted to do things like this, and there's any the risk in those things just because they're they're uh, you know tourist things doesn't necessarily mean that those people have your best interest at heart or whatever you know at the end of the day like there's you know it's it's just basically like I, even if i went car- shark cave diving i'm assuming i'm going with the you know competent people who know what they're doing and it's safe you know but obviously there's an element of risk uh, but it's it's not even like the the reason to go to these things is the element of risk the reason to going is that there's this slight no. that the reason there is no. there's a slight element no. of of adventure to it no. if there's yeah no i think people want to it, I there's think no people, adventure to but it I, but i think but like you are dealing with something that's like on a geological timeline i think the people chances want of it going clout. off the day you go are so low that you think you're safe but it all of these things could fucking go yes, off. Yes, of again. course. But I think it's just kind of like, oh, we went to see this live volcano. It was beautiful. No one wants the volcano to go off, though, you know. It's yeah, a pr- it's a, but it's, if you're going a to a live volcano, you could go to a dormant volcano. Yeah, I know, I know. But it wouldn't have the same edge, you know. Yeah, but that's it was it. a beautiful People are going place. for that little bit of adventure. But they, it's such, like, the, the nature of one, a geological timeline. No, no, but, no because, no, because... You don't think people are going to a nobody, live volcano? N- n- nobody, nobody skydives on the off chance that you know my parachute won't open. You don't That's go to a, a volcano on the off chance your that you, you're, you're not what? hoping it goes off. But the, the the fact that it's a risk, the fact that it is dangerous, is the adventure. Like thrill seeking. No, you take the, every it's best. The fact that it's it's the fact that it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, it's this amazing geological thing. It's this natural thing, and you're going to see it. But it's a natural thing that has a propensity for destroying everything within a hundred mile radius. Ten miles. Yeah, so why would you go see it? Why would you go see that? People do. Part you know, of it humans, is humans do trill seeking things. No. You don't. You don't think there's a little bit of like, like a, adventure? Like, yeah, like but, people but, who run after to, 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 uh, twisters. Those are scientists. No, they're crazy people as well. Those are scientists. Yeah, you don't. You don't think that there's a little element of. Just, there was a lot of scientists at the volcano. There's a, a woman named Stephanie Coral on TikTok, and this is where I am, became aware of this volcano. Like I didn't. I, maybe I missed it when it happened in the news, but um, she's kind of been charting her whole sort of uh, recovery from you know skin skin grafts and nerve damages and blood clots and you know pressure compression bandages and and it, anyway. I, I, it's a documentary amazing people for sure yeah it's incredibly grim yeah it's um, very sad yeah on the much more pleasant side of things mm-hmm. we uh, we all shared an adventure this week yes and we made our way into the heart of Dublin City yes and uh, we went to see John Mullaney in a poor, a poor, the Olympia a poor recovering drug addict um, talk about his harrowing recovering <laughs> drug addict <laughs> John Mullaney. Talking about his harrowing experiences uh, dealing with his addiction uh, intervention and subsequent rehab rehabilitation. Mm. Are we are we trying to are we trying to lean into the harrowing end of bit this? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> just I bouncing got, off I the harrowing end sleep. of volcanoes <laughs> into the harrowing end of stand up oh. comedy. Um, right, so like, let's review them. How many stars would we give old John Mulaney? It's five stars, guys. It was five stars. Come on. Uh, I don't really go in for this. Three point five. System. You know this. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, Brian. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Every, as everybody knows, a thumb is the equivalent of two point five stars. Um, mm. No. So it's no. Uh, it's a five star mm-hmm. review. No. No. I will hang up this call right now. <laughs> it was great. Um, I watched the comeback hit again last night, and he mentions the fact that the celebrant at his wedding was Dan Levy. Um, I had forgotten or not clocked that at all. So we saw the man that married him to Anna do what what? Um, I can't remember her name. Uh, Anne Marie Tend- Tend- Tendler. 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 Um. Uh. So that was that was an interesting little, I guess, face to put to a name. Um. We have been talking about Mulaney and his his ongoings because we're Mulaney fans since we started this podcast. I'm not. Uh, 
You're not a Mulaney fan? And you're a Gosshead. I'm not a Mulaney fan. fan. Gosshead. I love a bit of gossip. Um, it was very, 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 very funny. The support acts were very good, but Mulaney was next level. I guess maybe there's an element of we bought tickets to see the guy, so we're predisposed to like him. But at the same time, it was very, very good. The first guy was excellent, though. He was he was, he made me laugh a lot. He was a what, what was his name movie. again, Kevin? Um, oh Jesus, Seaton Smith. Seaton Smith. Yeah, I remember the Smith bit, but I, Seaton. How are we spelling that? Seat on. Yeah. But uh, he was brilliant. I really liked him. He was so so funny. Uh, yeah, but it, uh, John Mulaney was excellent. Oh, it's just uh, like the only problem with these comedy shows, like where, where you see like with these guys, is like uh, it just comes to a point where it's just like I kind of like just, just I need to kind of just give my face, my cheeks a little bit of a break, you know. <laughs> it's uh, but it's, it was good fun. It was so so good. Uh, and I think I think it, he, like you know obviously comedians you know like any other thing is performative you know and they put on a show and all that kind of jazz but he seemed to be quite uh, uh, he seemed to be quite enamored with his surroundings and the people there and he seemed to be uh, appreciative of, of it do you know what I mean like he seemed to kind of really be like I'm going I'm going to say it I'm going to say it I don't think they had a great time in Belfast <laughs> I don't think they had a great time in Belfast no I, I, I think Belfast people maybe laugh a little differently um, all three of them all of them mentioned kind of ragged on on yeah. a dourness to not rag, not 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 rag, gently yeah, a, a, gently a, a, ripped a more sedate a more sedate um response from the crowd i think yeah but you know true. what but 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 to be fair those people bought tickets and they showed up yeah, oh, yeah. Um, just, they just laughed differently up there that's all yeah, I mean, th- there's an element of they went up there and no said, crack. thank Christ, we're here. I've spent the last day and a half in the Republic and those fuckers, they're so argumentative. Like, you know, like we don't know what he said. We don't know what they said about us up there. This is true. true. We went you know what comics days. are like. True. Fucking wind socks, you know, they're just trying to win over the audience. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I don't, I don't. I'm believe, sure there's um, there's there's things they can give out about going on in the Republic. No, 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 we're perfect. We're pretty here. good. Yeah, we're, we're we're pretty good. Yeah. We decided to stay in the European mm-hmm. Union. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, they didn't get a vote. Sorry, Northern Ireland didn't get a vote. No, they got a vote. They voted to stay in the European Union, not but they also got, voted not, to stay in the vote. United Kingdom. Not all of them got a vote. What do you mean? Mary, Explain yourself. Mary, we Mary, can cut whatever. Mary Lou said that they didn't get a vote. They voted. I saw Mary Lou on Sky. The, r- I say, the I, province. I, I saw. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can I finish? Can I finish? All right. <laughs> let's hear this. I saw Mary Lou on Sky talking to a. Did you see her on Sky? Did you see her on TikTok? Can I? Can I finish? In the most unparliamentary. You, you take. You take your thank, time. Thank yeah, you. Right. Time. In the most unparliamentary language. Fuck you. <laughs> Deputy Aiden sort of <laughs> order, order. Um, but uh, the the woman had made a claim that they chose they voted on Brexit and then Mary mm-hmm. corrected her and said that they didn't get to vote on Brexit. So they did get to vote on Brexit. I don't know. But you do know they did get to vote on Brexit. Who's the they? province? The the province of Northern Ireland voted. And as as a whole, in uh, the majority of people in Northern Ireland voted to remain in the European the Union. The people who, the people who identify as but Irish, but they, they didn't. Vote? Hold on, yeah. I'm just asking. Every uh, every every person. And this is going on in what I saw on Sky. Here, let's not get caught. Yes, yeah. No, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's move on. No, let me let me clarify this because okay. I'm going to lose my damn mind. Every province in the United Kingdom got to vote yeah, let, on let, Brexit. Let, 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 don't look away. Listen, <laughs> every every province in the United Kingdom got to vote on Brexit. Then they fucking added up all the fucking votes and said, what's the majority? Now, if you look at the United Kingdom, they voted to, or if you look at Northern Ireland, that province voted remain. Ah. But across four countries, the majority came out as leave. So I think Scotland voted mostly remain as well. So that's why Scotland and... Northern Ireland the whole time were like, we voted fucking stay, you know? Anyway, sorry. 
it's just when you say things like the the people of Northern Ireland didn't get a vote, they did get a vote. But the problem was a hundred years ago they voted to stay in the United Kingdom. Oof! I saw I saw Ooh. I saw a video and fight uh, fight fight fight. I saw a video. There I saw a video and it was a English army person uh, in Northern Ireland, obviously in a scuffle with some Irish people, and he told them to go back to their own country. <laughs> And uh, they're like, we are in our own country. You go back to yours. And he was like, this is my country. And it's like, oh, <laughs> stalemate, guys. <laughs> stalemate. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. We tried to negotiate with them. You know what they're like. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so. John That's a Mulaney you, line. Yes, anyway. I know. Yeah, cut, cut, that, cut that. You know, cut that into where it's respectful. Uh, not at all. No. All of that no. stays. I'm not doing no, this podcast anymore. It stays. All of that stays. Anyway, John Mulaney. John Mulaney. Very funny. Great, great, great crack. Um, I in- I would have liked to have seen him the second night. Um, if if he changed nothing, I'd I'd be happy. The you know I'd, I'd still be I still would have laughed. I still would have laughed at all of it. But I'd be curious to see. You know, he had one night in Belfast and two nights in Dublin, and I'd be curious to see what changes on the second night. Does he keep everything mm. exact or where does he, where does he tweak what? You know? I'm sure he calls out the fact that somebody fucking shouted out his fucking, or talked in the middle of his closer. Uh, yeah. Um, yelling out so late in the show was a lovely way of putting it, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, that With that Dublin confidence. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Did he say with that Dublin confidence, was it? Or did you add that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, he did, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's not. He's not particularly fond of uh, McGregor or his antics. I don't think. Very funny. Um, the it was funny when that guy yelled out, and you just kind of sort of like he answered, and then when he said yelling out that late in the show, there was just the way his face sort of a darkness fell over him, where he was just like fuck. <laughs> it he was just a shadow there. for a moment where he was like. Yeah, like I, I, I was like, oh, I don't think I've seen that again. But when I was watching the comeback kid again, um, I realized he had that he had that moment where he calls out the guy texting in the audience, um, which is quite funny as well. He's like, what are you doing, texting? What are you doing, you, V neck? <laughs> like the way he just like locks in is like you are interrupting my show. It, it, he's very good at putting a little bit of dark on it as well, I guess. Um, I have a buddy who has two tickets going for his gig in London next weekend. If you want to buy those off him. Um, I am broke. Yeah, <laughs> I know the feeling. Um, it was fucking great. Good job, Mulaney. You, you know what? I, um, I'm not sure when exactly he kind of was on my radar. Um, to, uh, to be honest, I think one of the first times I might have heard of him was when he got that um, multi-camera sitcom. And I was like, Mulaney. who is this guy? 2014. And then kind of found out he was a writer on certain things and that he wrote stuff that I, you know, mm. found very funny. And it was clear that, you know, like he's, he's by far one of the most successful people to come off SNL that wasn't a, a performer, you know, mm. uh, as a writer. It's, it's clear, basically like a, I kind of think he's kind of one of the funniest people around. Um, I was really curious. I, I knew I'd have a good time, but I was curious to see how much of that um, can he deliver on stage post rehab. Mm. And he was superb. He really was. He was just everything that's good about him that you see when you watch a special. It was all there. Mm. Um, it was very impressive. Cool. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. I thought he was great crack. I just worry. The last comedian I saw before that, or what you guys was Dave Chappelle and mm. look where he went. <laughs> I, I I do think that like Mulaney doesn't trade a lot of people shock, that, though, like that. Yeah. yeah, and like that. There's there's a lot of people who are very quiet about the Chappelle thing, and the fact that they haven't supported him kind of tells me that they. They don't, but they've got to, you know, weigh their own careers against, like, waiting. Look, it's into, hard out there, man. You know. Yep. Yeah. But what, what I'm saying is, like, I, 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 I think it's, I think we know which ones don't yeah. support him. Like, I, I think Neil Brennan was kind of quite said as much as he could say without saying anything explicitly. He's probably even been explicit, really. Yeah. <laughs> when you kind of think about it, 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't go down. Don't don't go out like your boy. Was that the line? <laughs> yeah. yeah he, 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 anyway, look. Um, I think Mulaney's. It's funny how enough. many people weigh, weighed into this stuff that 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 Brian Cox has defended J.K. Rowling twice in in a week, and the first time it's just like, okay, and then he 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 doubled down on it, you know, a couple of days later, and it's just yeah. It's just funny to see that, that there's so much stuff that you could choose to engage with the media mm-hmm. about, and the stuff that a lot of people choose to kind of come out. It's just like, you, you really... Yeah, need, it's you just know, of all the hills you, you could really die on. You really need to get involved. Yeah, yeah. Like of all I, the fucking things you could die on. Look, look, Rowling, Cox, uh, Linehan, all of these people are people that like had great reputations. I don't want to throw Cox in there entirely because I don't entirely know where he's... how how big a hole he's dug for himself yet. But... It, it is it is very odd where it's like how does this oh, sorry maybe we should just get off it's just like just leave your oar out of this fucking water and get on with your life would you please it, thing, it's the, not affecting the, the, the you is, why are you dying on this hill the, it's actually killing your career ultimately I don't know as, 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 as the older I get like, it's like obviously you know we're all just in different times and changing times and constant stuff like that, but the older I get it's just like I really don't care about what any whatever anybody does as long as there's no negative consequences for anything or anyone, as long as you know people aren't like being like completely, uh, you know, re- uh, disregard or hurt nature or other people. You know what I mean? Like, if if you can, if you can, if you live your life whatever way you want under your your own things. Yes, the 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 thing is, I think it's got to be a an ego thing. There we go. That's you know, closer to it. Co- co- Cox is Cox is coming off the back of everybody's hailing succession as you know the greatest. Oh, thing now my opinions are irrele- irrelevant. Yeah, relevant, relevant, relevant. Yeah, no, but you see the yeah. the, the thing, um, Kevin. So sometimes I had this with the like when we were doing the sort of uh, repeal the eighth kind of thing, and you know me in arguments. I'm as fence city as as the world gets, but I'm also very, you know, what I mean, I I was not on the fence about repeal the eighth. I was not on the fence about the the gay marriage referendum. I'm not, I'm not on the fence about anything that's kind of progressive and moving people towards happier spaces. But trying to understand how people could mm-hmm. be against it, you know, you you kind of just said there, as long as you're not hurting anybody. But there are people who have in their head the idea that these practices cause suffering and pain. Yeah. And they believe they are proactively campaigning towards something that's going to stop suffering and pain. And that's me trying to understand how somebody could be coming at yeah, this, yeah. you know. If you genuinely believed that abortion was the mass slaughter of infants, how could you sit quiet? You have to campaign against it. If you genuinely believe that, yeah, you know? I can understand, of course, the these type of things, and like you know. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, it's not my job, like you know, to change those people's mind. You know, I, I can't. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, 100%. but I certainly I just were like with with those people, and like everybody, like. Everybody wants certain lifestyle choices and certain things accessible to themselves, and you know it's just, mm-hmm. um, just yeah. I don't know. Treat people the way you want to treat it. And Anyways, yeah. I I want to be clear here. I um how do I? I'm completely pro-choice. I fucking repeal the eighth. All all that jazz. I'm that guy. You know, like I I I'm really reductionist and what is the value of life? There's a lot of it going on, you need lads. More white savers I'm, 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 like you. In. Um, thanks. Um, I just want to make, <laughs> but I just, I just am trying to understand how somebody could be pro-life, and the only thing I can I, land I, on I, is, I think it's, if you do believe, that. I think it's the only way to to actually create a shift is you have to understand where they're coming from, where they might be coming from first, or or what that goes both what ways. piece of information, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. what piece of information do they need, you know. Yeah clarification or a better understanding on because otherwise you just end up arguing the talking points and nobody's going to change their mind everybody's already in, like nobody's going to change my mind on like repealing the eighth or gay yeah. marriage or something right yeah. they're not but i think i'm informed mm-hmm. but they also think they also they think they're informed. informed and if you're if you're having a conversation then about the main talking points yeah. You're just parroting the talking points, and no, nobody's nobody's changing anybody's mind that but, way. and the thing is you, you have to change some minds because Nothing happens. Then. But for for the you know? longest time, the 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 uh, the 
the presentation of homosexuality was that these were aggressive sexual predators that were chasing your children. And rather than just, you know, human beings looking for love where they... It, it's, a, it's a kind of alarming to see it creep back. You know, we've got all these anti migrant protests at the moment and they're all it's all the same yeah of course like you 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 follow one cause a couple of layers back and it's always it's always the same you know it's it's either anti-semitism or islamophobia or homophobia you go back enough layers it's it's never it's never anything new Mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of it's alarming to see that yeah no, it, it's it's small crowds, but they they are oh, empty, empty they are showing up in places, the most you, know, noise, you know. And mm. these these folks rattled off their bullshit, and you know it it it. Uh, there was it a guard attacked at a, some rally in Formoy yeah. recently. Did, did you guys no. see that? There was video mm. of it. There was a guy live streamed the whole thing in Formoy, and everybody's there with masks and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But they, I don't know how. I mean, I can guess how. They identified that there was a, a plain clothes cop there mm-hmm. um, monitoring the situation and they confront him on on their live stream and stuff. And then the I cop saw, gets attacked. I think I saw a video of them and like walking him away going, are you there, guard? Or look at you, where are you going, guard? I didn't watch it to the oh, point yeah, that he got that. attacked, though. He got attacked and then the, the guy filming it is telling him, stop, you know, we're not about that, not about that. It's like, that's just because, <laughs> that's just because you're filming it, mm. you know, uh, and it was happening on a live stream. Mm. You can guarantee that that's what they're about. Yeah. I mean, and again, in trying to understand why people would be protesting this stuff, the fear mongering is coming from just stupid fucking prejudiced places. But there's also an element of, you know, people feel underserved or under. Well, well, this stuff is coming from like far right movements yeah. around the world. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, and that's that's the Russian really insidious thing about it. Mm. The fact that it's 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 not it isn't right now it isn't people with um legitimate concern or fear what they're doing is they're co-opting people who have legitimate concerns or fears Mm -hmm. because there's there's a bit of unease and they're stirring up that and they're amplifying that unease and then they're getting to show up to stuff that is ultimately nothing to do with what it's about it's always about something much more. people are concerned about their own sinister People that are concerned about their own livelihoods, their own, um, like the cost of living crisis is a big like um, buzzword at the moment. But it's, as you say, it, it's right wing agendas picking people that feel uneasy based on the fact that they are struggling and they're targeting that towards a scapegoat. Well, this thing that, whatever, but yeah, whatever people are, are kind of uneasy about, you can always. And John Mullaney just pointed kind of... us at Belfast and. <laughs> but it's like, wasn't it the episode of The Boys? Far Right it Mulaney. Wasn't, it, wasn't it The Boys where there's a character, or like there's a, isn't it The Boys? I'm pretty sure it is, where somebody's just kind of constantly getting like uh, exposed to the media about like the superhumans or something. Doesn't go off and shoot somebody in a convenience store or something. Yeah. Yeah. That that uh, Far Right TV show, The Boys. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like that though, isn't it? It's just, it's just. It's media or the things that these people are exposed to. The fact that people genuinely watch The Boys and they don't think Homelander is a bad guy. Mm. That's, that's fucking... That's hilarious. But that it's that, also crazy. Part that, like, it's mind-boggling, but it's also a perfect little snapshot oh, that, 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 of the, where the, we are. The, 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 There's people who watch The Boys and they think they think Homelander is... People that watch Wolf they, of Wall like, Street. They, people that watch Wall it, Street no. itself. People that watch... Um, there's so many examples of things where people like... But, but the thing miss. is, like, e- e- even, even Wolf of Wall Street, I can kind of understand because he's got a nice house. Mm. He's got sports cars. He's got Margot yeah. Robbie. He's living this fucking wild lifestyle. I can understand how somebody might miss the message mm. there. Yeah. But <laughs> Homelander, <laughs> Homelander is a fucking grinning psychopath. Yeah. Yes, he, he imprisons he's, he's a the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's the bad guy. Mm. And people... But I, I've, I've seen the conversations on Reddit talk about the show and they... It's fucking staggering. Like the the fans that Homelander has in the show that the show actively takes the piss mm. out of, he has in real life. Know. Like there's it's 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 bizarre to watch an episode of it where people are cheering him for killing someone at a rally, and we're supposed to understand 
he's the bad guy and it's like almost it's horrible that he's got this support now and then to watch the discussion of the episode afterwards it, and it's so weird what people will turn a, say, turn a blind eye on you know like mm-hmm. do you remember um i'm trying to, I'm trying to remember <laughs> the, the uh, louis theroux episode where maybe it's when he went to visit the like the white supremacists in america or or the the people in south africa i can't quite remember but the guy was big into the tv show are you being served and that was his touchstone for british culture and he thought he was bonding with louis over it and louis was able to go but do you remember the character on that that was like a stereotype to be sure but flagrantly a homosexual character on the show and he was just like oh i don't look at that like but you watch the show it's like oh i love the show it's amazing but you don't Oh yeah, completely just blind spotted this character yeah. out of the show. Hilarious, the stuff people yeah. like, everything that's going on with Homelander, it's like, okay, you like that he's strong, you like that he's a fucking Aryan looking motherfucker, but you miss the weird fetish shit and the murder, like, does that and stuff happen in your head? And the insecurity and the man-baby behavior and the, yeah. you know, like... The fact uh, that he just yeah. wants to be mothered. Yeah, yeah. I, like, hey, look, the thing is, that's, that's, the, that's the kind of ironic side of this whole thing. It's just like, you couldn't pick a more... Like, don't get me wrong, Homelander is an incredibly entertaining character in terms mm-hmm. of, like, him in that space and that world and stuff like that. Like, but you couldn't pick a more pitiful, disgusting excuse of a creature. Yeah. You know, he is... Yeah. That, that, that's that's the joke, that he's like a liter- he's a literal Superman yeah. and he's the most... Disgusting you know, thing. Insecure, yeah, but he's brilliant. Narcissistic, toxic. Yeah, it's great, it's a great yeah. idea, but this is, it's hilarious how it's lost on those people, but sure, that's also indicative of the type of mentalities that they praise and, you know... Uh, well, that's one of those things as well where, um, I don't know if I shared this video with you, but like, I get like, I don't know, like, I get, I don't know how to describe how I feel when I see people that are under anesthetic or I see people who are a little bit sedated and they just have this, I I feel so sorry or protective of people Mm. in the human race because the minute you put a little bit of like stripping away that top level ego and id type of stuff and you get back to who yeah. the person really is it was this i just saw this video of a woman who's like clearly anesthetized and she just wanted her cat to hold mm. <laughs> yeah. and it was just like i can't sleep unless i can hold my cat and it's like we're just fucking children yeah you know we we, oh, we yeah, age into this like e- we age into these like cynicism and personalities and as we age out and get more like older people with senility as well and like once you strip away this top level fucking chaos it just boils down to like i just want to feel safe and warm and held and like babied and it's so sad and lovely in many ways and i just want to protect everyone and but but that like that's the thing you know like we're living on this you know we're living on this perfect inhabitable environment Mm. right that's just designed to like provide us with everything we need mm. it's like how did we end up with jobs <laughs> like all any of us want when you strip the layers back is to be warm and to be happy and have like a couple of animals and to just be, feel feel safe and nurtured yeah. and instead we've got layers of cynicism and job and ideology yeah. and stuff it's like how how do why do we have especially, jobs? Especially in the winter <laughs> walking around, about? I think about like <laughs> the amount of Attenborough stuff I've watched where you watch like little quokkas or little like, just like little rodenty mammalian things and all they want to do is get a little burrow and just huddle up together yeah, just, and just, we just want just a one bed apartment with a couch in front of Italian Chinese food. Like all we want to do is just like, <laughs> we're warm, we're fed, we're yeah, happy, just, we've got just shit nest. on the television. Yeah. All we want to do is nest yeah, ultimately, you, could be, you know? You could be pretty... Could be pretty content if yeah exactly you just want to nest ultimately and just get rid of social media because then you're not feeling like oh, i should travel more i should do this i should do that it's like nah just fucking you know stick to your books stick to your tv content stick to that bullshit and just just build a nest yeah i mean there's, there's somewhere in the middle of that but you know like it's just like yeah i mean you, you can go away for a bit yeah. you know go on your pilgrimage and then come back but we, we're know? so close to like mammalian ancestors that just like all we want to do is just have a little burrow and be safe and warm and go out and have a little adventure and come back and be safe and warm and while we're talking about mothering things this week we watched barbarian <laughs> be my be my baby yes how on a scale of one to traumatized how are you I was so unhappy watching it. I was so unhappy. Like, like 
I was trying to think how I would review. I it. bet you could watch it. I bet you could watch it again mm. and be nowhere near Hor- as horrifying. As I, I, I had no idea what I was seeing going in. All I kind of knew at some point in in one of the posters was that there was some sort of dungeon setup. Yeah. So from the start, I was really worried that I, I was really worried that it was going to like veer into kind of torture porn yeah. territory. 100%. And I was like, I don't, I don't want this slow burn with this with this, you know, nice, normal person who's just getting out of the rain. And I don't, if, if that's where this is heading, ah, like just the tension of that. Um, and that it just brilliantly undercuts it. It just kind of like a hard stop in the middle and then jumps to, to something else. And then it becomes a very different film kind of by the end. And when you watch it, I think it's, I've watched it Three or four times now, I think. Really? Uh, I still like it, but that tension is just... It's gone. It's, it's, it's not what it was. It's mostly gone, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I think yeah. the thing of it is, is, and I was thinking about this afterwards, and it's always a battle to get me to watch a horror movie, because I went through the horror movie phase when I was 13, 14, 15, and I went, I get it, bunch of people, everyone's dead by the end of it, and I wasn't into it. I feel uncomfortable, then one person survives. Um, I, I've fallen off, but... I'm going to, again, try and be vague um, because we're trying to be less spoilery, I guess, this year. Um, When she arrives at the house, we don't know what the sense of threat is. Is it the person who's already in the house? Is it the person that rented the house out to them? What is this tension? Then it shifts to, like... that Like, is there something supernatural happening? Because that guy has a weird nightmare and he's a bit twitchy and odd. Then they find something in the basement. So it's like, okay, is the basement the threat? Is this person the threat still? Is it like, we don't know where the threat is coming from because we're we're running through our heads all the various archetypes of this sort of slasher, torture porn, horror movie that we've seen before. And as you say, it then just shifts somewhere else. We meet a character and we like him because we like that actor and he's likable and we present him as this person. And then slowly we realize, no, he's not likable. You know, even though yeah. everybody says he's nice and good, he's actually mean and horrible and not to be liked. Yes. Um, but it just takes another fucking turn. And then there's a flashback. So we then start to understand exactly what's going on. Um, and that's what I was thinking about afterwards is that is like it's heightened. And the threat is kind of unrealistic. But that situation is very real. And we've seen that situation a number of times around the world. Yeah. And so suddenly there's a sense of, there is a grounding in reality to the, the root of this story that makes it really fucking creepy and plausible. and makes it all the more scary. And then the end of it is just a fucking action movie. Which is great fun. It's very silly. It gets very silly and very fun. And I, I, I think it's, I think it's quite deliberate. Yeah. Um, like the, the director's from a sketch kind of comedy background, mm-hmm. so I think, I think that's deliberate. Mm. You know, um, and I kind of, I, you know, I appreciate it. Like, I, like if that's what they set out to do, then it doesn't really matter if I would have preferred to kind of maintain that tension and and intensity the whole way through. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, I, I that 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 first half is is some perfectly kind of ramped tension. Yeah, like it really yeah. is, and, and shift just... of expectations. You know, mm-hmm. you you don't know what you're watching. Like the the review. Like I was trying to think how I would phrase a review of this, and was just like, I hated every goddamn moment of this. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, it it's 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 really really good. Fuck, I hated watching. Yeah, it. I like I did did. <laughs> The amount of times, like my my kind of, uh, you know, the, the kind of driving emotion, you know, kind of fear at one moment, but then just like laughing at so much stuff in it, mm-hmm. um, knowing as well that it's setting up a character for their comeuppance, mm. basically, you know, um, when, once you kind of know the truth of a certain character, you're like, okay, I see, I see where this is going, and I can't wait until. Until that happens, and then they, they have a moment of you know possible redemption, mm. and then not, and it's just all every step of the way. Yeah, it's all great. Yeah, um, 
the director, he, he kind of, he, when he Krager? wrote the opening part of it, Krager, yeah, Zach Krager, he, um, he, was, he was kind of based on a, a book, a section in a book that um, was pointing out all these kind of red flags in men, mm. all things that, that are red flags. And he, he kind of wrote the scene trying to write as many of them into it mm. as possible. So just, just all these kind of, it's a book called um, The Gift of Fear. And it's basically he took every he took kind of as many of these things that are indications to women to kind of like trust their gut. This is a dangerous situation. And he wrote them into that opening scene. So like you're kind of sitting there in those first moments and everything, everything's character. He's, he's, he's great as well because he he can he can play the kind of, you know, good looking leading man. But he's also he can also be a, a creep, you know, mm. and just everything he's doing, just, you know. Your brain is screaming like, "Run, get out! Don't do that! Don't do that! Don't do that!" And then the next day with the the basement and stuff, just the horror of that was fantastic. The f- like the the I'm tr- I, mm, the fact that the fact that the second actor is like oblivious as well to what yeah. he's looking at, and he just is like, "I love, I loved the." You know, <laughs> the, can you list basement space? You know, in the yes, in the yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you list a and rape dungeon? Scene like is... not not knowing what he's looking. At, you know, it's yeah. like <laughs> yeah. And then cutting, you know, to him with the measuring. Like they, it, it's funny. The, Square footage is important. Yeah, the like the first character, uh, she's kind of diving deeper and deeper into this, and she's just discovering horror. Mm every footstep she takes she's like there's a secret room secret tunnel there's another secret room there's more there's cages all yeah. that stuff and for him it's just uh oh wow more space <laughs> oh well this goes even further well, he's, he is just, an actor he works in hollywood you know, mm. he's seen yeah. many secret tunnels and weird back rooms yeah <laughs> have, you, have you any any particular thoughts on it kevin have you watched it more than once i watched it once anyways uh, i think it's brilliant and I think the fact that it feels like you're watching like two to three different movies in one sitting is really interesting. Like you're watching the initial movie and then kind of that obviously, you know, takes a turn the way it does. And uh, mm. and all the and all the kind of like even the stuff with like um Stagard. What's it is, is that how you pronounce his name? Skysguard. Yes, Skysguard. Uh like and like the way he kind of disappears on the tunnel, you're like, Oh, what's going on? And is he involved and all that kind of stuff? Like it's really, really, really good. And then like uh you know, uh, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but then when that when the just the long stuff comes out of it, and uh, it's just like, where is this? Like, it's just like this is completely changed. It feels like you're watching two to three different movies. But uh, I loved it. I thought it was great fun. Obviously, mm. disgusting in parts, but uh, but I, I, it's great. It really okay. is like it really basically it's just really kind of. Uh, it, it basically it, it just it knows what's what's kind of gross. And it really just leans into it, doesn't it? It really yeah. goes into some of that ick stuff. Like, the, the, there's real comedy in, like, the stuff with the bottle. I knew what was coming after the bottle okay, I as well. Okay, I didn't yeah. But, like, the, the stuff with the bottle with the with the hair is just, like, yeah. it's fucking vile. But I was so disgusted in that moment, I knew that was the yeah, point yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. You know, I was just laughing. I was just like, yeah, that's yeah. horrible. But I, I was kind of laughing. And then I, I knew the next thing was, Well, if he doesn't well, take the bottle... You know, if he doesn't take the bottle, yeah, and then the the fucking boop. <laughs> did you catch that? There's a boop. Like, did you see that? I can't remember. Yeah, he yeah, gets booped. Yeah. He gets booped. He's just yeah, like, you know, yeah. just, uh, I was just. It's great. Like, I love the ex- I love, but I love awful, the. Ex- but I love hilarious. the explanation, and everything for it. Like, I just love how. I just I like I like. When yeah, things, I don't yeah, think exactly. it needed it. Uh, like the the flashback was enough for me to figure out everything he needed. What was going it. on, and the. Yeah, I don't think it needed that, like, you know, exposition guy at the end to explain everything just in case he didn't mm-hmm. get it. I was a bit uncomfortable with the fact that, you know, there's there's real people in the world kind of from this situation and you've made I see what you're a monster of them. Um, and even though they might be sympathetic at the end, which they are, mm. you've still made this grotesque kind of monster of them. And I think I think you could have kept the flashback explaining the guy's history but it, it could have had a sort of um ambiguous supernatural element mm-hmm. that like maybe the space is evil or maybe years and years of 
policies and things that have led to the decline in the area has kind of manifested. Mm. And we've got this thing. I'm not yeah. saying change the actual the flashback, but it didn't have to underline it and say that this is the product of that. It could have just been that. It could have been a bit more ambiguous and vague about it. Yeah. Instead of, yeah, because that made me uncomfortable because you've essentially a monster created by. I tell you, the, the thing that I was a little, um, as nuts as it was, and I get what this was doing, I was kind of frustrated with I know frustration is the point, but it was just like the idea that a person would tell police that there is a human being's life in danger. But that happened. I know that happened. I know it happens. It happened. It happened. It happened very kind of around the time there was there was I can't remember, but there was people that escaped that were telling the cops and they were ignored. And it happened. It happened very Shortly but before it also happened, one of Jeffy Dahmer's uh, victims. Yeah. Escape from the police and please come yeah. right back. Yeah. yeah. Barbarian, uh, though. Good movie. Okay, well, maybe up. I just hate that that happens more so than I yeah. hate that they showed me it happening. Because it's just like there's a person whose life's threatened the premises. You've got a, you know, I, I've seen enough law and order that's like, you know, you don't need a warrant to break in if there's a, a threat to life, mm. a present threat to life. You, you, intervene I, I, you know it, it was making a statement yeah. here i guess because it was the fact that she wasn't believed yeah. because yeah. you know looking the way she was looking in that moment they're like oh well just yeah you know. yeah sorry and that that's kind of the point yeah. sorry kev you were saying mm, i don't know but uh yeah, okay. thumbs up anyways i like the movie thumbs up yes i enjoyed it a lot and well did i um it's a good movie it's an experience, but the thing like the the the, the worst part in it is that first kind half. of that first reveal of yeah that's the and worst it, thing you've seen it after that it's it's kind of the best thing a horror movie can do is build tension. Like I I had never had any time for like the the concept of torture porn. Just seeing people get minced. It's yeah I hate it. I just hate the the fucking screaming. I th- I do love that Justin Long seems to enjoy, you know prosthetic monster movie things where he's put through weird shit like i every so often i'm watching these things and i do have to think like the people making this movie are having fun doing weird psycho things you know (laughs) like they're fucking around with prosthetics and stuff that day going they've just got a sick sense of humor more so than me going oh my god this is objectionable it's like there's no way justin long didn't read the script going and then a then a giant monster mother woman with weird off-colored tits tries to breastfeed me in a fucking shack like he did he has to have cackled as he went i can't wait to do that yeah. enjoyed the movie good recommendation uh the other thing i watched i watched last night was uh the pilot for the last of us did oh yeah i really want to watch it i didn't get to see it i really want to watch it i'm gonna wait until it's all wrapped okay and then I'll, all right i'll watch it all right i think i might get bored in five weeks and yeah and jump into it. Uh, you won't get bored in five weeks. Invincible Two is coming out. Oh, Invincible Two! I think it is. Yeah. Well, they're starting to plug it anyway. Uh, yeah, they they released a scene from it. Yeah. I think didn't they? Wait. So, just on Last of Us, I guess. Um, you enjoyed I did it? watch the pilot. I enjoyed it a lot. Really good. Have you played the game? I haven't. No. Yeah, have we have. Um, oh, yeah, and I think that's going to be to my benefit here because I'm not comparing. I'm just going to enjoy a show. Um, sure. And the production values at the start are really, really cool. I think you must have seen the scene with John Hanna. That's doing the rounds. It's the cold open. Um, you know, it's a it's a little two minutes. I've, I've seen nothing. Okay, well, well it's it, it it is the cold open type of thing, and it's just like a scientist in the '60s, you know, kind of Carl Saganing what the future could be, and he kind of predicts and plants in our head, you know, how this could be possible. To be honest, I I probably wouldn't bother with this, but for the fact that it's from people behind Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Yeah. yeah, people behind Chernobyl coming from um, HBO. We hope for good things. The production values are really high. Pedro Pascal is fun as usual. Like he's he's just got a good presence. Um, I was thinking watching it going between Game of Thrones, The Mandalorian, and now this. Pascal's got a quite a stacked IMDb building. He does, doesn't he? Um, yeah. And 
you know, we've got the trailer for The Mandalorian 3. Uh, you know, that's coming out in a month as well. Um, so, I mean, I don't know that it constitutes spoilers. Um, I feel like Pascal is very much the Sean Bean of this series. Because um, I, I know what happens in the game in that regard. Um, I, they, they have to have. I mean, there's no way the people that made this game haven't read The Road. I'd imagine so. Um, that's a that's a tough book to read. People say that, and I just fucking flew through it. and was like, "This is fun." I think it's I think it's as tough in the in the terms of like um, not fun. But what? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I I breezed through that thing. I don't read many books, <laughs> yeah, but I think I I think it's but I think it's tough. I think it's tough that uh, in the sense of like uh, you know, there's only so many ways they can read how to script it. Uh, passages of Ash. I've only seen the film. Yeah, I don't see that. And I, I needed, I needed a drink. Really? Okay. I've just uh, seen I, was, I, I wasn't yeah. enjoying the book, but uh, and I did enjoy the movie. But it is brutal. Film is rough. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I, I, here's the thing: I haven't watched the film. I read the book thinking I'd then watch the and film, it, but then I just read the book <clears> and was like, "This is." I've seen this in sci-fi. I've seen this in horror. I've seen this in comic books. It's post-apocalyptic road to fucking chaos. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't shocked by the concept that in the post-apocalypse human beings will turn on each other for resources, that, that they would resort to cannibalism, that they would resort to to predatory practices with like everything that's in there. I was like, I've seen this in other like fucking Mad Max. Um, it's yeah, well but it's, it's not the originality of it that makes it, yeah, you know, hard to, to stop. But I think the, I think people I met that were like, I think people I met that were like, this is so objectionable weren't necessarily Mad Max fans. Like, it's well executed and it's presented well, but it's like, I guess, if you not encountered these themes and content before? Am I under... I, I, even having this conversation, I'm going like, did I miss You're something in the inside. book? I didn't, like... I have, okay, they're eating I think babies. Blocked it, blocked it out. <laughs> Got it. Cannibalism. Have you all not watched fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Like... Man's inhumanity to man. <laughs> what is it? Man against man, man against God, and man against nature. Yeah, yeah. Is that man it? Against Something like that. Himself. Yeah, that's the, the Keith Foran that three was, stories. That was the first one I said. Man against man. That is not the Keith that's, It's Keith Foran's dare three you. tips How for storytelling. How dare you? How dare you? Um dare you invoke it you know yourself there's only three stories I watched a TV um, show on Channel 4 called The Dog House and it's basically first first dates with prospective dog owners where dog owners will go to a rescue centre and then they'll be they'll are the dogs having dates or are the owners having dates and they both are dog owners and their first date is with no, dogs no 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 or is it it's a dog, dog date it's, so it's, it's people basically looking for their forever dog and it's, they come to the rescue ah, centre okay. People adopting yes, dogs. Yes, people rescuing dogs. We like to say rescuing dogs, um, but people are rescuing dogs. Uh, yeah, they go there. They tell the Neil Brennan. They tell the people what they want, and then you know they ignore them and bring out something that they think is better suited for them, mm. and then they all go home happy together. And they do a short little update at the end of the episode, some time later. But uh, it's like yeah, they talk. Like it's, it's you know exactly the type of show it is. You know. It's uh, but I, I we watched uh, the new season of that, that, so I watched a bit of that this week, and it's just feel good TV for fun. I started watching Hunters. I know Kev mentioned it. I watched back. it. Yeah, it's good. Um, I watched the first season. I thought it started really strongly. It, yeah, I know what you're saying. Somewhere yeah. along the way, it, it turned into like I could have been watching. Like, like there's there's that generic format of show where you've just got a group doing a thing whether it's a Buffy yeah. or a Criminal yeah. Minds yeah. or a Chuck yeah. or something like yeah. that and it turned into it turns into that I'm not sure where exactly I do know what you're saying though it becomes a bit more yeah. character based or something uh, in a way, well, of, what, in a way the, of, do they set up like do they set up like a clubhouse and they go back and have meetings and then go yeah, out essentially, yeah. 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 yeah but it's it, but uh, it's yeah. it's fun except instead of Giles it's Al Pacino it's fun but I yeah. haven't wanted to watch you know I doubt they're making a season 2 Spin Donkeys yeah. So it, it's out. See, it's out. out. 
It's out. Fuck yeah. off. Yeah. Oh no way. Okay, yeah. I definitely watch. That's it. why I watch. That's why I watched it. Uh, at the end of it, um, at the end of the, have you watched season one? The end of it's bonkers. Yeah. So it's fucking you wild. Just, so just, like, um, I, I look. I liked it in a, in a, a, it's zany. You know what I mean? Like it's, but it's it's. I like I like it. Like it's. I thought it was entertaining for sure. Um, it's a fun show, but like I kind of haven't thought about it since. And it's funny that you said you're watching it because uh, a clip of a dick came up the other day on TikTok or something. So obviously, yeah, it is out again. You know, you know. I think it's the first yeah. episode, episode one, season one, and uh, the guy's having the barbecue at his house, and the girl's like, "It's the butcher, it's the butcher of blah blah." blah. Yeah, yeah, he just and, he, and the way he just takes out. He's gr- he's, he's great. Brilliant. In that scene. Yeah, he's, he uh, Dylan Baker. He takes out he's his entire family. He's so good. I don't terrifying. know uh, the scene, but I'm immediately thinking of Marathon Man, where Lawrence Olivier is walking through the Diamond District in New York. Is it White Angel mm-hmm. that gets yelled at him? Yeah, um, I think so, yeah. You, have you yeah. seen, is is that a sort of parallel, if we were thinking cinematically? Yeah, in terms of, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, have, you, have you seen that movie, Kev? No. No, um, it's a similar, it's a similar thing, sort of a, I think, a sort of post-World War II Nazi trying to sort of like get the diamonds he's hidden somewhere and like, there's this scene oh. where he has to walk through the Diamond District, which is predominantly Jewish, and he kind of there's just this tension built because he knows that there there's kind of a chance I could be recognised here, and mm-hmm. somebody spots him and starts is it Vice Angel or Vice Angel, something like that in sort of German. I've seen that. I've seen that, that theme. It's a, that's a very to, famous scene, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Is it? But, safe? Uh, is it safe? It, it's like. Um, is it safe? Yeah, it's kind of like the movie Blue Streak with Martin Lawrence. Go on. It's exactly like that. Yeah. Did they take that off? Uh, well, yeah. Oh, trying to like, find the diamonds. Oh, yeah, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Coming back a year, they're trying to find the diamonds. And the building is now a police station. So he must uh, use costumes and other things to... Uh... That sounds like a zany, fun adventure. It, it is. I highly recommend it. Nothing wrong with it at all. Um, so the takeaway this week is everybody watch Martin Lawrence's Blue Streak. It, it, assuming they haven't already, you know, um, I, I, they probably have. You've seen it, right? Of course, it's got course. it's got um, Luke Wilson in it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it does. Doesn't he touch his genitals in it, or is that somebody else? How many years after Bottle Rocket did Luke Wilson make that? Ten, six, six. No way. Bottle Rocket was nineteen ninety six, right? Blue Streak's nineteen ninety nine. Wow, Jesus. What a year for movies. Blue streak. (laughs) (laughs) 